We are live. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the RDU Buzz, where we talk all kinds of real estate development, yep. restaurant development, really any kind of fun development happening in the triangle. We are so happy you're here. If you are watching live or you're catching this later, uh, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Uh, yeah. It's always interesting to us to see where everybody's watching from and helps us to curate the content um, for the viewers. So we would love to hear where you're watching from today. So be sure to drop it in the comments. Absolutely. I feel like you're, you're taller tonight in the seat. I'm trying, I grew. I grew. <laughs> Um, yeah, we appreciate y'all joining in tonight. We've got some, um, I think some pretty interesting topics, uh, to cover tonight. I mean, we always try to pick as interesting of topics as we possibly can, but I think tonight there, there are legitimately some really interesting topics. So we're going to kick most it off. Most weeks it's just totally boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, tonight we're going to kick it off with some housing market data. It is uh, it is April 11th now. So um, typically, obviously, housing market data is lagging. So it's it's hard to come across real time housing market data that's in that's in a, it's enough data to like actually, you know, make sense of things. Um, and so we will go over March's data tonight, which I think is really revealing on the market. And it and it just shows a pretty similar theme of what we have experienced so far this year, which is a really hot market um, for sellers and a um, somewhat of a challenging market for, for buyers. So yeah. And Neil is tuning in. Neil here grew up in Hillsborough, yeah, very living cool. in Thanks. Atlanta yeah. and moving to Apex in July. Thanks awesome. for tuning in, yeah, Neil. Thanks and for tuning in, Neil. We are excited for you to get back to North Carolina. It's going to be a big, uh, a nice adjustment from yeah. the, probably the pace of life in Atlanta and the traffic and everything. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure going from Hillsborough to Atlanta was Yeah, that's was a pretty, big adjustment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So... Cool. Well, I'm going to share the screen here and we'll kind of dig in to, to uh, some of this data. So uh, March data came out. Sorry, I've got I've got a screen here and it's like really close to my head right now. So I'm having to like kind of scoot back a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at, go down here to new listings. So new listings were up year over year 4%. So that essentially new listings means new homes hitting the market in any right. given in any given month. Um, which means 4%, roughly 4% more homes hit the market this March than they did last March in 2023. Yeah. And there was more hitting the market last February. So I feel like this is like a more. continuation of, yeah. you know, we're seeing a little more being added to the inventory yeah. um, this year than we did last year. Yeah, yeah. So February's numbers, I don't remember February's off the top of my head. I, I, I should have looked them up before we hopped on here. But February's numbers, if I remember correctly, Triangle wide new listings were up 20%, tw yeah, 20 it something was percent. Digits, it was, yeah. it was significant. And so we've kind of leveled off a little bit. Um, January was also double digit growth in new listings. So I feel like in March, we've kind of it slowing down is not the right word, but but we've kind of leveled off that ridiculous growth year over yes. year that we were yeah. seeing the on February, the new listing yeah. front. February was just wild with new February listing. was and yeah. things were going off faster than they were the February before too. So how does that look for March data? We're thinking, how are things? Yeah. Are so days, <clears> so days fast? on market, um, days on market are, are the same as far as, um, February to March. So you're looking on average 33 days on market and that that's a pretty, we kind of touched on this. Um, was it, was it two weeks ago when we talked about the Austin area? I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, I think it was last week. Yeah. Maybe it was, it was last, last week. week. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, those numbers are somewhat misleading because you can look at 33 sure. days on market and think, oh, it's not that hot of a market. Yeah. I mean, but that 30 would not days be accurate. is a long time. Yeah. yeah. And then it's just something else to keep in mind. So this is triangle wide data. It um, is. Well, triangle MLS wide. And we really, our MLS expands outside of what I would consider the triangle. It goes into like the Kerr Lake area, Smithfield, like considerably further east than I would comfortably yeah. say is the triangle and considerably further north in some ways too. So um, just something to keep in mind is that's not just Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, you know, wake numbers. Um, yeah. This is our, our full MLS and this is everything. So there's always going to be like outliers out there that just sit and sit and sit and like pull that number up. Yeah, but even in places like, 
carry. I mean, the average days on market in March and carry was was 35 days. And and that you when when, when you're in the carry market looking, you don't feel that. You don't feel the third no, like it that's, feels like three days. It does. It does. And so um obviously the the the, the homes that most folks are interested in, the homes that are yeah. turnkey, that aren't going to require a lot of work, that are in really good areas, you know, they're not backing up to, you know, interstate 540 or whatever and right. and and you know with a lot of highway noise those homes are going to fly off the market and right. so um obviously though these days on market numbers are being pulled up by those other homes that aren't as appealing um but yeah so <clears throat> so i've i pulled up obviously you have the entire mls carry riley and wake forest because i think those are those are a few good representations but going back to new listings um, so new listings are up triangle wide, 4% carry, 7%, Wake Forest, 26% year over year for, for new listings. So that's crazy. Um, and then Raleigh is pretty flat. So Raleigh, Raleigh's right at 0.3%. So that's, I mean, huh. that's as flat as you can get. Yeah. And I would, I would assume, I mean, I don't know for sure. I don't have it in front of me, but I would assume a lot of those new Wake Forest listings are probably new construction listings. What do you think? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's just a lot of new construction still yeah. happening in Wake there Forest, is. um, you know, compared to some other markets. So yeah. It could be. It is. So the big thing with new listings. So obviously when you have new listings hitting the market, ideally you also have, at least for, for buyers, um, for sellers, not so ideal, but for buyers, you at least have, you know, hopefully some growing inventory. Um, that has not been the case this year. And that is also not the case in, um, in March. And so obviously with more homes hitting the market, you would assume that there's a growing level of inventory on the market. But what's happening is there's so much buyer demand that those new listings, even though those listings are up, you're seeing those get taken quick enough the inventory is actually less than what it was so right. just an example of that mls wide um inventory or, or months supply of inventory so how many months it would take to sell every single house on the market um inventory of month supply is down almost five percent triangle wide and carry it's down nine percent and wake forest is down 32 percent that's really interesting it is and in raleigh it's pretty flat so Ra raleigh's kind of hanging flat and obviously raleigh is a massive area so you got a bunch right. of different sections in yeah. raleigh so north raleigh is going to look a little different than you know other parts of raleigh um and so but the, you know this is just pulling in the entire city but you can get you can get pretty granular with with raleigh if you want to and you should if you're actually looking for a home because that's that's the reality of the market right. yeah you always want to have when you're in your home search have data for you know maybe the zip code that you're looking in or the yeah. general area or town you're looking in because obviously trying a wide data when you're only looking to move to durham you know you don't yeah. need trying a wide data you just want Durham data, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, so all in all, I mean, we're still looking at a really competitive market because there's still more new listings hitting the market than there were last year. And yet inventory is still down in some areas substantially. I mean, when you look at carry, carry's down 9%. That's a substantial decrease in months supply. Um, and when you look at Wake Forest, 32%, that is, I mean, that's massive. So, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we've got Steven tuning in from Fayetteville. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, Steven. Yeah, thanks for listening in. Yeah. But you know, you know what's fascinating is um, so even in even in this kind of hot market that we're in, we had two two situations this past weekend where where we got the homes relatively at asking price. Yeah, I felt like uh, this for, weekend was for really, two buyers. really so, interesting because yeah. I feel like the weekend before. I feel like a lot of our clients had kind of maybe been passed over on mm -hmm. different multiple offer situations. And then this week maybe was slightly, oh, we might've just got lucky with the two yeah, houses, yeah. but um, yeah. So we're really excited for those folks, but definitely it's interesting to see kind of yeah. what's happening with the market and how it changes so much week to yeah. week. Um, and yet kind of stays consistent at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And both, I mean, both, both houses were great. Um, they're well taken care of homes and, and, and both in really nice areas. And so, um, you know, it, it, it just goes to show like, you know, you can look at this data, you can, you know, we can, we can talk about how hot the market is, which it is. Um, and, and I think the expectation when you're purchasing a home right now is it, we're going to deal with other offers. It's going to be competitive. Um, but there is, there still is, even in those markets, a chance to 
be the only offer standing. Yeah. You should never give up. On so it. No, yeah. That's good. Have realistic expectations, yeah. but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I thought this was interesting stuff. Um, I love, I love when the housing market data gets dumped um, early in the month. Cause it just, it just gives us, it gives us a lot of data. Cause obviously, you know, we kind of see what's going on on the ground, but it, but it's helpful to see the data kind of back up that, that reality. So yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Cool. All right. So that is the housing data portion. So we're going to move into, so I don't know if y'all, if, if y'all watch the show, um, a decent amount or, or the podcast, I should call it. Um, you might remember we we went over a, a pretty in depth study of what downtown Raleigh, um, or I, I guess it was a proposal of of right. what to do it's with like downtown they have Raleigh. Like an independent, you know, yeah. company kind of come in and analyze some things and how to make improvements to make the area um, more appealing. And now we have one in Durham. But before we, we go over it, if you are just now tuning in, uh, we would love to hear where you're coming coming in from so definitely yeah. uh drop in the comments yep. where you're watching from we would love to see and i meant to say this earlier we will not have a live next week so i meant to say it at the beginning and at the end so it's zach's birthday is, it will be my birthday next 40 Thursday. No, no i'm kidding i'm just giving him a hard time he likes to round <laughs> I'm up get, i'm getting close though he i am getting to round close. Up a little too much. 40 is going to be a weird age because i remember my dad like that the first birthday i remember my dad having was 40. And so that's gonna be weird to turn forty because yeah. I don't know. Because you your you dad just, just you always think of your parents yeah. as being old, right? I know. So I that know. you're just like you're just an old man. I know. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. So, um, <laughs> so getting back on track to this study. So this organization called Discover Durham, which helps head up kind of the the I think the the tourism sector of of Durham and provide different um, different recommendations proposed some changes to the Durham area. The biggest one being a, a new convention center. So I'll be honest, we live in we live in Durham County. We've lived in Durham City. Cindy grew up here. Did you know that they had a convention center? Because I, I, I did really not, and didn't. I lived here. I don't know if maybe when I was in school we ever went to anything there, but I, I, I had no idea. When you said that, I was like, no, it's not a convention center. I thought you were talking about the Carolina Theater. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> so Durham apparently has a convention center, and I had no idea. But probably the reason I had no idea is it is the smallest convention center in the state. Apparently, yeah, so, so there's good reason why I didn't. Maybe why not didn't having very it. many conventions because you know you need to have a pretty small amount yeah. of people. <laughs> and so and so that that was the point of of the study is is hey in order to improve tourism into Durham you need to build a new convention center. Yeah, um, I mean, with an adjacent it makes hotel. Total sense, and I know they were having thoughts about that in Raleigh too, is that the convention yeah. center in Raleigh didn't have enough hotel space to accommodate for like really large conventions. And I know, I think they were trying to make some changes. This was a couple of years ago yeah. um, to make that more appealing. So yeah, I mean, if Durham wants to compete in that, they're definitely, we need a lot more hotel space downtown because no one wants to, I mean, it's fun to stay in an Airbnb, but if you're like, coming in just for a convention it's yeah. always nice to just like have that hotel where you can just walk it is to it like you don't want to yeah. deal with having to rent a car and stuff so you definitely yeah. need a lot right right at that central point. exactly and so that's that's you know point point one one and one two is essentially all regarding durham rebuilding a new convention center and then establishing some adjacent adjacent hotel which i which i think i think you know Again, I had no idea Durham even had a convention center. Right. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think. I mean, I, wonder I don't want to. I need to look. I don't want to look claim it up. that they don't have anything going on there because I truly have no idea. But yeah. I imagine it can't be anything big. So I feel like if they're pulling in things, yeah. it might be people that maybe are locally here already, and it's just yeah. like smaller, smaller, more focused kind of events. But if they wanted to have more, you know, business conferences and stuff, you definitely need you need space for things like that. You do. That. Yeah, you do. So um, the next. The next one that I want to touch on, and then and then we'll just we'll we'll touch on one other because I don't I don't want to spend as much time on this one as as we did with the Raleigh one. Um, they want to build an outdoor amphitheater, so that was one of their their I other would be recommendations. So, so excited, yeah, about I, I, that. I don't know. I'm curious where I'm curious where it would go, where the outdoor amphitheater would go, because I don't I don't feel like downtown there's there's necessarily space. Yeah, for I mean, it. it would definitely have to go in an area where something is coming down like i mean i don't think it would come here because i don't think there's room for it but i think of like 
right across from yeah. Bright Leaf, where we unfortunately had that gas explosion and that building has just been like leveled and nothing's really been done with it. And I'm like, that could be yeah. kind of cool. And that's very Is there like enough centrally space located. There, though? I don't yeah, think there's it's enough space. It's not very big, but they're talking about the high school across the street, Durham School of the Arts. They're talking about relocating that campus, and that would be really big that is, yeah. uh, if they tore down the building which would be really sad because it's like a historic yeah. building yeah. in durham it's like one of the first high schools so You're i don't right, know i, mean, I don't even know if they can land. tear down that building. i don't know yeah. you know with like historical i don't know if it's like in a has any kind of like historical marking on it that would make it like ineligible to tear down but if they did reconstruct something there it would be cool to have like a public space like that that everyone can enjoy instead of i would be i would think it'd be really unfortunate if that just becomes more like modern yeah. apartments <laughs> i think it yeah, would we be have we have a lot in downtown durham and there's a lot yeah. of great restaurants but i would love you know the more stuff that closes i feel like it's just becoming apartments and i'm like yeah. kind of losing you know, we want to have people need a reason to come downtown and want to live downtown in those apartments. So if you had, it'd be so neat to have a, like a little concert venue there. Obviously, you know, it's not going to be big enough for like yeah. Taylor Swift, but if you could even get just like smaller bands well, I mean, or I mean, just think local about, music, yeah, think about it would be really Downtown fun. Raleigh, they have the Red Hat Amphitheater, which is, which is really cool. And then, yeah, and that really is not a big space. No, it's I think not. Even it's not at all. Like that yeah. And so in, in Cary, you have the Coca Booth Amphitheater, which yep. is also outdoor. Yeah. Now, that and, one's got a lot of like land around it, though. Yeah, I feel like. But. Yeah, and then you have the larger one. Um, it used to be what is it now? It's Coastal. Yeah, coastal it was Credit Walnut Union. Creek, yeah, and now coastal it's Union. Coastal Credit. Yeah, that's Union. a that that's Music the big pavilion. one. But but the two small ones in the in the Raleigh area, I'm going to lump the carry one into the Raleigh area would be the Red Hat Amphitheater, uh, which is downtown Raleigh. Yeah, and and Kokobu. So yeah, I think Durham, Durham decent, could use like bands you would know of, but maybe like wouldn't yeah. sell out something like PNC. Like we well, saw and, uh, and, Need to Breathe and Ben Rector there. Um, and think about and think they, about um, a lot of good names with Coco Booth. I mean, you know, it's 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 used in a lot of ways. So that's where the um, the Chinese Lantern Festival is, the North yeah. Carolina Chinese Lantern Festival. And so you know, because right right in here they talk about. Um, well, I don't know if it's in this one, but one of these points they talk about having a place um, where you can have festivals, like a headquarters for having festivals. Yeah. And if you had something like a Coca Booth Amphitheater in Durham, that's the perfect place for that to take place. Yeah, for sure. And Durham is a very artsy kind of scene place yeah. anyway. So to have more so like have music festivals cool, yeah, or arts dance really festivals, cool. uh, just performing arts in general, I think that would be really fun. And not yeah. that I'm saying, I, I feel like I'm going to get hate comments for saying tear down the old DSA. That's not what I'm hoping for. I'm just saying if the school were to move and there was, it would be unfortunate to just see the building rot away right there. Yeah. Like it would be nice to see it be used where everybody can enjoy it again. So yeah. Yeah, but anyway, I think that's I think that's a great idea. So I'd be I'd love to I'd love to see this kind of play out for for Durham to get it uh, an outdoor amphitheater. Yeah, and the last one I want to talk about, and I'm not sure where it is on here, and I don't want to scroll to find it, but um, they 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 pushed multiple times for more family friendly activities in downtown, um, which are I mean it. I, I say downtown, really Durham in general, yeah, just more family, think, family friendly right. attractions is what yeah, they like call it. Type things. And yeah. Yeah. And I, they, they never really defined what a family friendly attraction is. But when I think of a family friendly attraction, I think of something like, like the parks you get in like the Raleigh or the Carries or the Apexes, or I think of um, like Pullen Park is a great example. Like I would 100% call that a family friendly attraction in Raleigh. And and the right Durham Durham doesn't have anything like that. They really don't even have because in here they also talk about um, different um, how would they call it like sports like a sports venue like different fields and stuff for like sports tourism. Right. Like Durham doesn't yeah, doesn't really have that. Not no nothing significant at all. Yeah. So it'd be really nice to see more of that. And we could only laugh because they put a little chart up of like things you're doing good at or what where is like the strong features of each thing. And in the park category, it said. Duke Garden, they're like, that's that's not a park. That's privately owned by by the university. And then <laughs> Durham Central Park, which actually I was surprised to learn this past year. That is not a Durham run park. That's like a private organization owns that. And that's where the farmers market meets and everything. I don't know if the county might subsidize it a little bit, but I'm sure um, they do. So it was just funny to see like their biggest highlights were things that Durham doesn't actually run. And I was like, that shows how sad it is that the park scene in Durham is so bad that we yeah. couldn't get one <laughs> thing actually run by Durham on the list. To be fair, there's a lot of things Durham does really well 
and there are some things they don't do well. Yes. And and we and, will always criticize those, the park system. The park As system parents, is you know, I'm like, I hate that I have yeah. to drive to Wake County to find like a cool nice playground. Parks, yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's not that things yeah. in Durham are dangerous or anything like that. It's just like, I don't know. It's just kind of lackluster. It'll it be is. like it's a really small piece of equipment and there's usually not a bathroom. Um, you know, just like little things like that. Whereas like a lot of these newer parks in Wake County, yeah. the equipment is like incredible and when little tiny central fields. park is your crowning achievement yeah it has it's, like it's, a slide and one little rope thing yeah. to climb on <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway so but i i think in general it's really good it's good that durham is investing in these studies and hopefully durham will invest in in implementing some of the ideas from these studies because yeah, there, I really there's some hope good ideas. Would. There's yeah. some good ideas. I, and it's a 20 really year plan. And so obviously this is the stuff that happens overnight. Right. Um, it takes a really long time. So yeah. All right. Moving on to the next thing. So talking about we're talking about Durham. So we're going to switch it over to Chapel Hill and talk a little bit about sports. Um, so those of you who are um sports fans, you probably know of what's called the Dean Dome or the Smith Center. Um, I've always called it the Dean Dome my entire life. I think the the actual name of it is the Smith Center. It's where the um, the yeah. men's the men's college basketball team plays in the Smith Center. Um, but Carolina just announced um, that they are investigating, essentially, clo- I I I, I don't want to say closing down the Smith Center, but but I mean, building a be. new yeah. arena, a new arena for yeah, basketball, which is really interesting because this arena is really not o- that it old. Opened in it's, 86. Yeah, yeah, from eighty six, so it's not like it's like decrepit or falling apart. I mean, it kind of is because that's where yeah. Carolina plays, so you know it's not the best. But I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But it's a huge sports arena. I think it's one of the bigger college sports arenas. Yeah, it is one in, of the biggest. Yeah, still, and that could still be the hurting problem. about the heels tournament loss. Neil said, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm not, I'm not, Neil. I'm hurting about the Blue Devils." No, I think and Neil's then, saying he's hurting. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I was actually, you know, after after State beat Duke, I was like, we were starting to root for State. We were like, yeah, we'll just root for State. Like it's kind of cool. They're yeah. like the underdog, so it was a little disappointing. It that was, they didn't it make was, it. but so. Congratulations yeah. to the Wolfpack on making it to the Final Four. Yeah, but I do, I do think it's interesting. You know, I mean, I, it, when when it comes to when it comes to the Smith Center, like I don't, I don't really know why they would update it or why they would build a new one other than because it, it, you know, I mean, yeah, we think about I mean, Cameron Indoor Stadium. I mean, I don't, I don't oh I have no idea like how old it is, but it plastic. is. Yeah, it is. And it I don't think old. they would ever consider no, it. unless it was like falling. You know, it got to a point that it was like not redeemable in any way but yeah. i think they like that classic so it's really interesting to me that they're like it's like they're abandoning this like what was like state a state of the yeah. art like in the 80s i'm like oh it feels like when you think about it feels like, kind of like a sacred a sacred place too. that students have to yeah. the places that you know they were in in their college years as alumni like it's a big deal to move a college stadium because people get really attached to things like that they and do. um i find it very very interesting and um you know they're talking about moving it potentially not even on campus anymore and like it sounded like i think a lot of the more modern day um arenas have like preferred seating i think it's a way to probably make more money maybe like boxes or something or you know so that could be a reason why um but it'll be interesting to see what they decide refurbishing the current building is still on the table but it sounds more like they would prefer to move it and i that's going to be a several year project so i'm sure it won't be anything for sure i mean hopefully we'll hear a consensus in like the next year but i'm sure it'll be sure Many years before they are not playing in the Dean Dome anymore. No, said get your Cameron, tickets before you Cameron can't go needs anymore. Better air conditioning. It and is he's, better and than it used to be. It was terrible. It's still, it's still pretty. I, I mean, I've only been to a handful of games in in Cameron because they're, they're. I mean, it's so hard to go to a game there. Yeah, it's hard to get um, tickets. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to get tickets, and they're they're so crazy expensive. expensive. But yeah, it. The last time I remember thinking it was it was pretty hot. The last time I was there, but I I don't I don't remember being that bad. Maybe it used to be a little worse. Yeah. I don't think they even had air conditioning for a really long time. Yeah. And then, it, or when they did, it was kind of pitiful. And now it's, now it's definitely better, but I mean, it's definitely not as nice as 1986 Dean Dome air conditioning, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> for sure. All right. Moving on. Let me see. Let me go to the next one. Sorry. Things got a little jumbled. So, all right. Trader Joe's. So this, this is kind of old news. Um, It's like a month old. But a new Trader Joe's is coming to 
Raleigh, which is really exciting. So this will be the second Trader Joe's that is in Raleigh. It's gonna be right off. If you're familiar with with Raleigh, you probably know know where this is, but it's right off um Creedmoor Road. There's a little shopping center there called Brennan Station. Um I I don't I don't really know what all is at Brennan Station other than Briggs. That's the only Yeah, there's a the Moe's in there, a Briggs. Um, oh, there is the Moe's. I forgot yeah, about Moe's. the Moe's. I think it's a Harris Teeter. Um and a couple other like more local type restaurants. It's a nice little shopping center. It for is. Sure. It so is. I could see Trader Joe's. It's going to be packed in there really when Trader nice. Joe's oh my, comes. It's already kind of hard to park there. So <laughs> if you've ever uh, shopped at a Trader Joe's, it's, it's always, always packed. Always packed. It's like, like it's like the building fits fifty people and yes. there's like a thousand in there. Oh yeah, I saw this parody video um, online of them <laughs> them like pretending to be the people who created Trader Joe's, and they're like, let's make it really small inside, and then make the parking lot even smaller than the building. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it just it's made so me laugh. True, I was like, it's, it's so true. So, it's so tight. Um, but it's such a unique grocery store. And really, I mean, some people try to compare it to Aldi. And I'm like, that's not a yeah, fair comparison not. at all. Because I don't find it. It's not a discount grocery store for starters. But it's just, you. they have so many cool, unique little yeah. like, I guess it's frozen. And then like there are other prepared box things that are just like, you can't get them at Harris Teeter, Food Lion. You can't get it at a place like Aldi. Yeah. It's just so unique to Trader Joe's. And, and I wish that instead of a second rally location, I wish they were putting one in Durham because right yeah, now Durham you have to have go one. to Chapel Hill um, if you live yeah. in Durham to get to Trader Joe's. And depending yeah, on where you are, it's pretty, it said might as well just drive to Raleigh for some people. <laughs> yeah, it said it'll be the city's or the, the Triangle's fifth. I know obviously this will be two in Raleigh, one in Chapel Hill. I don't know where the other... There's one in Cary. Okay, I know that makes sense. Um, we've been to that one. And then I'm not sure about the other. I'm okay. not sure whether... Yeah, okay. Other one, yeah, so. yeah. But but that'll be the fifth... This will be the fifth one in the area. So that's cool. But yeah, Durham, I really wish Durham would get one. Yeah. I feel like we're the perfect fit. So Trader Joe. Durham would be the perfect Joe, fit. Joe, if you're listening, <laughs> we want to trade with you in Durham. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I would love for... I'd love for Trader Joe's to come to Durham. So... Yes. All right, moving on. Um, the Fenton in Cary. So if you've ever been to, um, if you've ever been to the Fenton, which is this, uh, multi-use development area in, in Cary, it's, it's a really, it's a really cool spot. It's so really nice. It's, there's yeah. a ton of, um, there's a ton of apartments. There's a ton of shops, um, a ton of restaurants, it's a movie um, theater. yeah, movie theater during the winter time. They had a, they had an ice skating rink. Yeah. That was really um, cute. It's just a, it's just a really, there's office spaces. It's just a really, it's a really cool area. Um, but they are preparing to start their potentially second phase of the development. So all that's there is currently the first phase. Um, I didn't reading, realize it was even going to be bigger than it was. Yeah. Re reading this, I, I don't think it's going to be too, too much bigger. You know, it talked about um, in here, it gave some square footage. It said uh, the the initial plans. I don't know. Obviously, these are initial plans. Uh, the initial plans for the second phase were seventy five thousand to one hundred thousand square feet of retail space, um, which I think, based on what they already have, is is a pretty small is a pretty small number. So, um, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a crazy expansion. Uh, for the second phase, but anything extra there is is really nice because it's it's already it's already a really nice development. Yeah, yeah, and it does say that there's. I think it was initially proposed that there would be a grocery store in that fit and property, so maybe we'll see a interesting grocery store. Could be um, maybe a maybe the sixth Trader Joe's. Probably not. I doubt. I. I, I feel like it Trader says it Joe's has to is be a like, smaller grocery store, so it's gotta. But be, it could be like a Sprouts or something like that. That's that's yeah, smaller. Yeah, I feel like Sprouts is kind of big though. And I, I doubt it's a Whole Foods because there's a Whole Foods in Waverly Place. Yeah, it would have to be like relocated yeah. or something. Yes, yeah, like so I wouldn't. I don't, I don't think they would leave. I don't think they would leave Waverly that's Place. True. They they shouldn't leave. I mean, it's a nice yeah, shop center yeah, as well. For sure. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, a um, yeah. Any anytime you have space to add on to, um to developments that are successful. I think it's a really cool thing. Yeah. All right. So moving on to this, is probably our last topic. Um, we're not going to hit, we're not going to be able to hit all of our topics this week. So there was this interesting article talking about where, um, where um, college graduates are uh, migrating to after, after graduating college and, and the top markets. Um, and I'm going to share the screen because it's kind of, it's pretty cool. Um, Raleigh, I, I told Cindy where Raleigh placed, Raleigh placed 20th on the list. She was like, well, that's not really good. But, but I think I, 
I mean, when when you're looking at like how big a lot of these cities are that Raleigh uh, is competing yeah, with, I mean, yeah, you got yeah, New York yeah. on I mean, here. I and knew Seattle that obviously New York, and Miami, San Francisco, maybe Austin, Seattle. I knew yeah, that those I mean, you've would got some score massive, high. Massive but areas. I thought, you know, with RTP, I was like, I feel like we would be in the top ten. So I was a little surprised. Like. I, don't know. I think top 20 in the list like this is really yeah. good. So well, I mean, yeah, it's good. It's good. But I mean, like I see like of Minneapolis Orlando. or Baltimore. I'm like, huh, I don't really like know of anybody that was like dying to move to Baltimore or Minneapolis. Well, it's not that college. you're dying to move there. It's just where you well, get a job. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, those are like, massive cities. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So but but, I feel like Raleigh deserves a higher slot. Well, I mean, we topped out Orlando. We topped out Charlotte. We topped out Pittsburgh. I'm mean, very and proud Tampa that we topped out Columbus. Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's cool. Which Charlotte's which, a bigger city by population. Charlotte is a bigger city. So I think that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought, I thought this would, this, I mean, obviously places like, which makes sense, right? Like Washington, DC, Chicago, Boston, the Bay area, Los Angeles, New York. I mean, it makes sense that they would dominate a oh, list. Of course. Like yeah. I mean, the top three are they're, exactly they're what I thought they would be. And I would have thought that uh, DC would have actually taken the fourth slot, not Boston. So I'm kind of surprised because DC is like, you know, I mean, I feel like a lot of people I went to school with uh, yeah. moved to the DC area post graduation. So yeah. 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 But you know, Raleigh, Raleigh is, um, I, I forget the actual, the actual statistic, but Raleigh is one of the most educated cities in the country. Yeah, right. Um, and this is why, because, you know, we're we're in one of the top markets for folks to move to after they after they graduate, graduate college. Yeah. And then people come and they just like it and stay here. And there's a lot yeah. of job opportunity in different fields. So it yeah. totally makes sense. It does. It does. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. I think that is um that is the only that's that's all I got tonight. Nice. So Cool. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add? No, not right, right. now. Oh, and Neil said Trader Joe's also has great budget beer and wine selection. So if you guys are looking for yep. that, definitely check out they do. old TJ's for that. And he said, I'm glad we're beating Charlotte. Us yeah, too. me too. Yeah. Me too. So a little friendly where is, I, I know you're in Atlanta. Atlanta's way up there too. So Atlanta's top, top 10. Yeah, so. that makes total sense. Yeah, which makes, again, it's, yeah. it's I mean, it's an economic powerhouse. So yeah, for sure. makes total sense. But for sure. Cool. Well, thanks for joining in tonight. I think I combined joining and tuning. Yeah, in there, it sounded so. good. Joining. <laughs> yeah, thanks but thanks for, for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in tonight. <laughs> we will, again, we will not be here next week on the live, but we'll be back the following week. So we won't see yes. you this Tuesday. It will be, um, or this Thursday. I don't know what the following Thursday, whatever the following Thursday is from the 18th. Yeah, Thursday so, after next. Yeah, cool. All right, y'all. <laughs> Hope y'all have a good week and thanks for tuning in. See y'all next guys. time.